hello students welcome back today we are going to discuss some more concepts from principles of inheritance and variation the next concept is law of independent assortment in previous video we are discussed mendel's dihybrid cross or inheritance of a two gene concept we are discussed in previous video so based on that dihybrid cross mendel proposed another law that is law of independent assortment so law of independent assortment is explained based on dihybrid cross remember that in previous when we discussed in inheritance of one gene based on that inheritance of one gene mendel proposed a law called law of segregation and based on two gene concept mendel proposed another law that is a law of independent assortment according to mendel the law of independent assortment states that when two pairs of triads are combined in a hybrid segregation of one pair of character is independent of the other pair of character it also say in other words if we consider the inheritance of two or more genes at a time their distribution in the gametes and in the progeny of subsequent generations is independent of other pair of character so let's see the explanation of this so according to the mendel the proposed law law of independent assortment when two pairs of triads are combined in a hybrid already we discussed dihybrid cross in this dihybrid cross two pairs of triads are combined so what are the triads they are considered under this dihybrid cross there are two triads they are consider two triads one is capital y capital y capital r capital r this is a one pair of triad so this is a capital y capital y is yellow and capital r capital r round and this are crossed with cross pollinated with small y small y smaller smaller so then it forms the gametes that is capital y capital r and here the gamete is small y small r and during fertilization these two are fused together to form f1 generation capital y small y capital r small r so this is is f1 generation so here uh, capitals are dominant so that's why yellow round all f1 individuals are yellow round so this we know now apply this independent assortment law so when two pairs of triads are combined in a hybrid here f1 individuals are also called as hybrids also called as uh, hybrids so segregation of one pair of character is independent of the other pair of character so in these hybrids when they undergo the self pollination self pollination the capital y small y capital r small r so during formation of f2 generation the self pollination occurs between so it is selfing so selfing means self pollination between this uh, f1 
individuals or F1 hybrids. When this or selfing between these uh, F1 hybrids, then one pair of character, segregation of one pair of character is independent of the other pair. So here, this is one pair and it is another pair. So now we are already given capital Y, capital R. It is a separated in the gamut. This is a one gamut. And capital Y, small r. This is another gamut. And small y, capital R. This is another gamut. And small y, small r. So segregation of this one pair of character is independent of the other character. So this pair of character is independent to this character. And this is the second one is independent to third one. Third one is independent. So here each pair of character, each pair of character is independent to the another pair of character. So that we will call as the independent assortment. So the independently asserted, segregated one pair of character to the other pair. Independently the character, a pair of character is separated in the gamete formation. So let's come to the another concept. Uh, uh, when we discuss the one gene concept, inheritance of one gene concept at the end we discuss the test cross for the monohybrid cross so similarly let's discuss about dihybrid test cross how the test cross will be in two gene concept we are all well known about the definition of this uh, test cross so test cross is defined as the cross made between F1 hybrids or F1 generation with its double recessive parent to confine homozygous or heterozygous condition of F1 hybrid. It is also defined as in another form. The test cross, it is also defined in another way. A cross between an individual of unknown genotype and recessive parent is called test cross. So test cross is always conducted between unknown genotype and recessive parent. So that we will call test cross. Through that test cross, we confine that the unknown individual, whether homozygous or heterozygous condition. So now let's uh, see that uh, how the test cross will be in the dihybrid cross. So the test cross is defined uh, that uh, it is clear F1 hybrids. So in dihybrid cross, F1 hybrids are F1 hybrids are capital Y, small y, capital R, small r. This is a F1 hybrid genotype. Is need to cross with a double recessive parent that is small y, small y, small r, small r. So here uh, it is all small y, small y, small r, small r, all are same. Total four gametes are formed, no doubt. In that all four gametes are similar. That's why we will take only one representation. That is small y, small r. In dihybrid cross, four gametes are formed. Here also four are formed. But all four gametes are having similar genome. So that's why small y, small r is present in all four gametes. That's why commonly we will take only one. And here due to presence of heterozygosity, due to presence of heterozygous condition, due to due to heterozygous condition, the gametes are four different types. 
so that is a, a one gamut with capital Y sorry with the capital Y capital R one gamut capital Y small r another gamut small y capital r and small y small r so let's see in the punnett square so here only this uh, it is considered as it is a male or maybe female so take on tabular form it is very simple tabular form we need to take So here, four gametes, one, two, three, and four. So here, take that four gametes and horizontally, capital Y, capital R, capital Y, small r, small Y, capital R, small Y, small r and here the gamut from the double recessive small y small r so the cross between this the first column is capital y small y capital r small r and second column is also capital y small y small r small r and third one is small y small y capital r small r and last column small y small y small r small r so this is the genotypes we get now what are the phenotypes of this so the first two one is yellow round first one is the yellow round and second one is also is yellow and here it is smaller smaller it is wrinkle yellow wrinkle and third column this is small y small y it is green capital or smaller that is round green round and uh, the last one is green wrinkle so in this uh, test cross of this dihybrid cross it form one yellow round and one wrinkle yellow wrinkle and one green round and one green wrinkle so the dihybrid test cross is dihybrid test cross is one is to one is to one in the dihybrid test cross value so one is yellow round one is yellow wrinkle green round and green wrinkle so this indicates that the f1 generation is heterozygous in condition if dihybrid test cross is appear one is to one is to one is to one it is appears in that form then the f1 individuals are heterozygous in condition heterozygous in condition and similarly if it is mono hybrid test cross the ratio will be one is to one because there we are considering is the one pair of character but in dihybrid cross we are considering as two pairs of characters we are considered but whereas in mono hybrid cross we are considering only one pair of character in such cases it is occurs in one is to one 
when you consider in two pairs of contracts characters contrasting characters then the dihybrid test cross will be one is to one is to one is to one so when it is appears in this ratio then the f1 individuals are in heterozygous condition the next concept is sex determination the x chromosome was first observed by hanking in 1891 during spermatogenesis in squash bug he described x chromosome as x body so he did not give that name x chromosome he considered that x chromosome as a x body so first the x chromosome is discovered as x body by hanking maclung in 1901 worked on grasshopper and named x body as chromosome so first hanking given that x body that x body is named as a x chromosome by named as a x chromosome by maclung in 1901 wilson and stevens in 1905 worked on drosophila and stated that one set of chromosomes similar in female but different in males odd chromosome in male was named as xy chromosome so in male they are stated that one set of chromosome in female is same that is xx it is same in female one set of chromosome in female in female is same but it is differ in males that differed chromosome is a y so the y chromosome is discovered by wilson and stevens so it is odd one is a y chromosome that is discovered by wilson and stevens in 1905 sex chromosomes carry genes for sex x chromosomes carries female determining genes female sex determining genes and also a few genes for somatic characters so somatic characters are also nothing but vegetative characters vegetative characters somatic or vegetative characters are also located on the x chromosome so these genes which are expressing this somatic characters are called as x linked genes or maybe sex linked genes so sex linked genes are nothing but sex linked genes for sex linked genes for vegetative characters vegetative vegetative characters present on x chromosome so genes for vegetative characters present on x chromosome called sex linked gene i am repeating the definition again sex linked or x linked genes defined as genes for vegetative character on x chromosome are called x linked genes or sex linked genes
Y chromosomes carries male sex determining genes and this Y chromosomes do not have genes for somatic characters. They do not have no genes for somatic characters. Only genes which are responsible for the sex of the male. The inheritance of X and Y chromosomes follows Mendel's law. So, the transferring this X and Y chromosomes to their children follows the Mendel's law. Methods of sex determination. On the basis of sex chromosome, on the basis of sex chromosome, there are different types of sex determination systems that one is XY and XX system or type of sex determination. So XY and XX type of sex determination. So this type of system we can observe in the humans and in some fishes and also we can observe in amphibians like frogs. So in this uh, XY and XX type of sex determination, male is heterogametic. That means they can produce two types of gametes. So and produces the sperms of two types. 50% of sperm possess X chromosome and 50% of sperm possess Y chromosome. So heterogametic. Hetero means different. So formation of different types of gametes we can consider as heterogametic. So in XY and XX type of sex determination, males are heterogametic. They can produce two types of sperms. 50% of sperms with the X chromosome and 50% of sperms with Y chromosome. Female is homogametic. That means the gamete. All the gametes are similar. Homogametic. So because they consist XX chromosomes. And produces ova. That means gametes. All of only one type with X chromosome. What? Whatever the gametes are produced, all the gametes are having only X chromosome. Whereas in males, 50% with X chromosome and 50% with Y chromosome due to presence of two different chromosomes in the male. The X containing sperm is called in males, X containing sperm is called gynosperm. And Y containing sperm is called as androsperm. So let's see the representation of this XY and XS type of sex determination. So here the female we are called as homogametic. And here in this representation, AA, it is nothing but here. In this diagram at the end we are represent AA represent the autosomes the chromosomes which are responsible for the vegetative characters are called as autosomes so female having 22 pairs of autosomes and one pair is sex chromosome XX in female the pair of sex chromosome represent with X and X so during gamete formation it is independently asserted. A pair is independently asserted. So that is one A plus X. So it is one gamete and it is another gamete. Two gametes are formed. And here males are heterogamete due to presence of two different chromosomes in the sex chromosomes. So males are also having 22 pairs of autosomes 
and one pair of sex chromosome that one pair of sex chromosome is represented with x y so during gamete formation one gamete receives the x with autosome and another gametes receives the y with autosome so here two gametes are formed in the two gametes one gamete with the x chromosome and one gamete with y chromosome that means uh, 50% of uh, gametes with X and 50% with Y chromosome. But whereas in female, all the gametes are with X chromosome, 100%. All the gametes are with one chromosome, that is one X. So that's why it is homogametic. And here two different gametes are formed, then it is uh, heterogametic. So now when the sperm or male gamete with X chromosome fuses with the egg or maybe ova with X and it forms the female. So when the Y chromosome is fuses with the X of the ova and it forms the it forms the male and vice versa. It is also a same. So when a sperm with X as well as uh, egg fuses, it forms the female. When sperm with uh, Y and egg, egg is always with the X chromosome. So then it forms the male or springs. And come to the and the second system or second type in sex determination that is uh, X0 and xx type of sex determination x0 or xo so let's see this type of uh, sex determination we can observe in grasshoppers and bugs so the males have only one x chromosome and uh, they are referred as x0 or xo so that means this O or zero represent it consists only one X, another one is absent. Either Y or maybe X it is absent. The female have two X chromosomes. Female have two X chromosomes and they referred as XX. And the third type of sex determination that is ZZ and ZW type of sex determination this we can observe in birds moths and butterflies so male in is a homogametic in birds male is homogametic already we discussed in human male is heterogametic but in birds it is opposite so in birds male is homogametic it consists two similar chromosomes that is z z and produce the sperms male no it produce the gametes called sperms all the sperms with the one type of chromosome that is z female is heterogametic that is it consists two different chromosomes z and w and produces vova of two types of vova are produced 50% of vova possess z chromosome and 50% of vova possess w chromosome so let's see the representations of these two types of uh, sex determination in the next slide so this uh, first representation of uh, this is the representation of e x0 and xx type of sex determination it is x0 xx type of sex determination so in this male is heterogametic x and 0 without uh, x chromosome without any chromosome with x chromosome and female is homogametic with the two similar x chromosome so here the male produce the gametes gametes with x chromosome and without any chromosome so when 
the male gamete with the X chromosome fuses with the female gamete always consists X all the gametes of female having X so when female gamete fuses with the male gamete with X it produces the female XX when female gamete without a chromosome that is zero with female gamete a male gamete without chromosome fuses with a female gamete with X chromosome then it produces the male X zero so now here already we represented that a a represent the autosomes autosomes are the chromosomes responsible for the vegetative characters vegetative characters and next representation so this representation is z z it is a representation of z z and z w type of sex determination so male is in this type male is homogametic and female is heterogametic so male having a similar type of chromosomes whereas female having two different chromosomes so female forms the uh, two kinds of ova so the female gametes are called as the ova so your plural is ova two different types of ova whereas male produce a similar kinds of gametes that is called as sperms so in males sperms with a same chromosome but ova with two different types z and w so when ova with z chromosome fuses with a male gamete with z it forms the male z z represent the male and ova with w gamete w chromosome fuses with the sperm with z then it forms female heterogametic determination on the basis of ploidy so in this system the sex chromosomes are not differentiated and the sex is determined on the basis of ploidy of the individual on the basis of ploidy means either diploid or maybe haploid based on that ploidy the sex is determined in some of the organisms examples are honeybees ants and wasps in these animals the sex is determined based on diploid or haploid conditions in honeybees males are haploid that means males are in 1n condition and females are diploid in condition so that means if diploid cells are present they are all the females if haploid gametes they are developed directly as a males so males develop from unfertilized eggs and females developed from fertilized eggs let's see that so haploid suppose for example one 1n is equal to 16 so haploid condition is 16 chromosomes then 2n becomes 2n becomes 32 consider it so now it is deployed 2n it is a female and it is a male it is female and it is male haploid so now this cell reproductive cell undergo mitosis haploid cells are always undergo mitosis haploid cells cannot undergo meiosis mitosis form the 
the haploid cell zone because it is haploid 1n condition and these are also 1n condition only that is 16 chromosomes and similarly if you consider this it is a representation female and we are here it is calling as a male so now here the female with the diploid condition now this diploid cells undergo meiosis for the gamete formation meiosis and then it forms haploid cells that is 16 one cell and it is also 16 so meiosis reduction division so the 32 is reduced into 16 chromosomes so it is also haploid condition now when fertilization is occurred between these two then what happens 16 plus 16 it becomes 32 diploid so if 32 chromosomes are present then it becomes female the unfertilized egg directly develops into the male individual the unfertilized eggs the unfertilized eggs directly develops into the males haploid so this so males developed from unfertilized eggs if eggs are fertilized with the male gametes then it become female so sex determination on the basis of environmental factors in this system neither the sex chromosomes are differentiated nor there is a difference in the ploidy of the individuals the sex determining mechanism is different so due to difference in ploidy or chromosomes are differentiated neither chromosome differentiation or difference in ploidy the sex determination mechanism is different on the basis of environmental factors in case of eggs of crocodile if the surrounding temperature is 30 degree centigrade or below 30 degree centigrade the females are produced so eggs are hatched and produces the females when the temperature is 30 degrees or less than 30 degrees if surrounding temperature is 34 degrees centigrade then eggs are hatches to produce male so temperature is more than 30 degrees then males are produced 30 degrees and less than that it produce the females and in case of turtles if the surrounding temperature is below 28 degrees the males are produced and if the surrounding temperature is above 31 degrees females are produced a few key terms which are used in sex determination that is one progamic sex determination before fertilization is called as progamic so this we can observed in male anibi syngamic so sex determination during fertilization it is observed in human epigamic the sex determination after fertilization so that is uh, example is crocodile and turtle are the example so progamic sex determination before fertilization syngamic during fertilization epigamic after fertilization 
so progamic is a honey bee syngamic is human epigamic is crocodile and turtles sex determination in humans so in humans sex determination is of x y xx type of sex determination each human cell contains 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs of chromosomes of the 23 pairs 22 pairs are the same in both and males and females so 22 pairs of chromosomes are same in males as well as females and these 22 pairs of chromosomes are called autosomes they are represent the vegetative characters one pair of which differ in males as well as in females are called as sex chromosome so only one pair is differs in male and female that is sex chromosome so females have two x chromosomes and are designated as xx and males have one x and one y chromosome and designated as xy so x chromosome is small and morphologically distinct is smaller than X chromosome. So in humans, the females are homozygous, that means having similar chromosomes XX, and all the gametes are formed during meiosis contain a single X chromosome only. All the gametes are so that's why. The females are homogametic. Homogametic. And males are heterozygous due to having X, Y, two different chromosomes. And they produce two kinds of sperms. Hence, they are called as heterogametic. heterogametic so two kinds of sperms in which 50% of sperm consists x chromosome and 50% of sperms consists y chromosome if the sperm contain x chromosome sperm contain x chromosome fertilizes an egg egg always consists x chromosome so sperm also consists x then the zygote consists x x and develops into the female individual if sperm containing y chromosome fertilizes an egg so egg is always x and the zygote is x y and it develops into a male individual so since there is an equal probability of an egg combining with either x or maybe y containing sperms there is 50 percent of chance of offsprings being a female and 50 percent of sperms has chance of being male because of equal probability the chance is equal for both a sperm with the X chromosome and sperm with Y chromosome. From the above explanation, it is clear that the genetic makeup of the sperm determines the sex of the child. So, sex of the child is a depends on the genetic makeup of the sperm. Sperm is produced by male. So, genetic 
make up of male gamete determines the sex of the child still in our society women are blamed for producing female child because of lack of knowledge about this concept so the child is male or female is it depends on male gamete gene composition or genetic makeup of male gamete not depending on the genetic makeup of female gamete so sex determination of child determine or depends on male partner only so here it is uh, the representation of this sex determination in human so father it is x y and mother x x with autosome this 44 or the 22 pairs or autosomes a a we will called as autosomes with one pair of sex chromosome x y in father and x x in mother so the x always having x chromosome whereas sperms 50 percent of sperms consists 50 percent of sperms consists x chromosome such sperms are called as gynosperm and 50 percent of sperms consists y chromosome such sperms are called as the andros androsperms so then when egg fuses with the androsperm the resultant is male baby and if gynosperm that means a sperm with x chromosome fuses with egg it forms a girl child so the giving birth to girl child or maybe a boy child that is depending on the genetic makeup of the male gamete that is sperm the sperm genetic makeup decides the child sex thank you students we will continue the other concepts in the next video already in previous videos i told that the genetic is always fuzzles so please be careful and practice it properly